Hello, Jeff. How are you? Hi. When did you uh, first touch the camera? <laughs> That's uh... Uh, 2006. Okay. That's when I got my first like serious camera and really oh, started serious pursuing. camera. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So at that point in 2006, I started with the intent of being a professional wildlife photographer. I see. Um, so I started right about the time that stock photography was dying. <laughs> yeah, right. So I was intending to be a you know a stock photographer, be out in the wilderness taking pictures of wildlife, and that didn't quite work out. But um, it became apparent within a few years that the only way to make any money with nature photography was leading tours and workshops. So I started right. doing that in 2012, I think was the first one. That I did. Uh, the first workshop you did? Yeah. Yeah. 2012? 2012. I see. So that's about about nine years. Uh, yeah. Minus one, maybe last year we shouldn't count it. <laughs> yeah, just yes, yeah. we count. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, but I see you're, uh, you're now really, uh, really uh, well known. I mean, in the industry that um, I've seen some of our publications around with your articles on it. And so you've been really active. Uh, so I guess you have a really good marketing person in your business. Yeah, my wife. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> we started, uh, so we started with magazine articles. She's a writer. Oh, okay. So we would do articles together where she would write and I would provide the photos. And, uh, and so that's how we got and we got started and then we, we did a book that was published in 2016 by Texas A&M University Press. Um, so that kind of got us some traction and got us going. Uh huh. So how you got involved with the wildlife photography? When, what was the first country you ever went out to take uh, serious pictures of animals? So I, I pretty much started in Texas, which is where I live. Okay. Um, I've always been interested in wildlife ever since I was a little kid. Uh, and the photography was, especially in the beginning, was just an excuse to be out there uh, in nature and observing wildlife. And uh, right. the more I've done photography, the more I've come to appreciate and enjoy photography for its own, uh, you know, in its own right. But yeah, I started out in Texas. There's a, a wildlife photography contest they have down on the Texas coast every other year where they pair up landowners with photographers. Uh, and that was really kind of jump-started my, my wildlife photography and, and, and helped me really quickly get better because I was able to see uh, where my photography wasn't good enough, what I needed to improve and that sort of thing. I see. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going a little bit backward now, but uh, so how did you train yourself to be uh, like a, you know, more professional photographer. Did you, uh, you probably took some courses and stuff? No, no it, just it was, the self-learning? Yeah, mostly? It's all, all self-taught, a lot of reading, uh, you know, looking at things on, on uh, the internet, uh, reading books, reading magazines, just really? studying, wow. uh, studying for photography. And, uh, and then just like I said, the, the contest really helped me. So the first time I did the contest was in 2007. I'd only been photographing for a year. Uh -huh. And I put my for portfolio together, you know, entered my images. And I had, I think, one third place image or something. So I was invited wow. to the, the awards celebration. And I started seeing all of the other images that won and realized, hey, I got some work to do. Yeah, right. <laughs> so I could see that, you know, my stuff wasn't good enough and I, I needed to improve and uh -huh. I really had to had to buckle down. So I had two years before the next contest um, to learn and improve and work on my on my technique and skills. Right. So you said usually uh, you go out to uh, just in Texas, so you, you go out outside, just uh, uh, take the wild road there. Yeah, that, that's where we started. And then you asked earlier the first country. I think the first foreign country we went to was Costa Rica, which is still my favorite foreign country. I'll be headed there in three weeks. Oh. As a matter of fact, I love Costa Rica. Uh, so we do a lot in Central and South America uh, and a little bit in Africa and Europe and India, but uh, mostly the Americas. I see. Wow, you, 
you talk so easy, but I don't think it, it, those are the easy truths at all. I mean, uh, so Costa Rica, uh, isn't it the country that has like a rainforest and yeah. pretty hot and humid weather? And you have to expect all this uh, kind of different environment right. than yeah. you are comfortable with. So, I mean, there's some, you know, there's some uh, really, I mean, exotic, you know, wildlife that you can take pictures, but then at the same time, you have to be able to cope with all this uh, uh, not so friendly environment there too, right? So was there any any moment that kind of you had a hard time when while you were outside taking pictures in those countries? Not not particularly. Really? Uh, yeah, it's you're not scared of a wild like uh, uh, jaguars or. <laughs> no, the scariest animal in the world are, are human beings. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's what <laughs> I've been hearing. <laughs> okay, yeah. so the yeah, so you never had a kind of a, a scary encounter with uh, uh, some of those uh, wild uh, beasts. No, it's all yeah. been uh, just pure wonder. Right, but you don't get really too close to them so that you don't bother them or kind of uh, 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 awaken them and, and you know, put them in a def defensive mode. Right. No, we, right? we don't approach them. Now, sometimes, so I do a trip to Chile for pumas, and sometimes they'll come close to us. You know, we're stationary, and they're just walking around, and they'll walk right past us. They don't even look at you. They're like, we're not even there. But they'll come within, I don't know, five meters. Yeah. Right. Uh, I just walk right on by. Wow. It, it's really a thrill. What about bears? Have you uh, had a trip with the bears? I haven't done really any bear stuff. There's a lot of people doing Alaska and the bears. Yeah, it's right. Just, it's not something that I've done. I would love to do the spirit bears in British Columbia, but I haven't haven't uh -huh. done that yet. I on see. The, it's on the list. I see. So you've been to yeah. mostly kind of a hot weather countries. For the most part, yeah. Yeah, the, okay. The, so you went to Africa, you said? Yeah, we did a trip there in 2015, I believe. And we were supposed to go back last year. Of course, that didn't happen. So right. fingers crossed that it happens this summer. It's scheduled for the end of June. Which country did you go? Uh, we went to South Africa before. This trip coming up is Botswana. Oh, I see. Yeah. So you went to uh, see all this... Uh, animals like lions giraffes yeah, all the, zebras yeah. all the all yeah. the main stuff right but you were um you you were on the jeep right you you do you actually go outside jeep and and approach those animals uh not in africa we do in in chile for the pumas we're on foot for that one. Oh, really yeah, yeah. But in Africa, you don't recommend it for that. Well, so the only time I've been was in Kruger National Park in South Africa, and you're not allowed to get out of your vehicle. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, okay. It's a, that's a rule in the park. Just um, for the safety. I understand that I think the place we're going in Botswana, we can. I haven't been yet, so we'll find out hopefully in a few months. Yeah, right. Okay. Do you have any uh, photographs or any uh, photo work that you can share now and maybe just talk about a little bit? Yeah, so one of my favorite destinations is the uh, the Pantanal in Brazil. Oh, okay. Wow. Uh, Great. Uh, I, I love this place. It's, as far as I'm concerned, it's the best destination in the Americas, in tropical America uh, for wildlife. Costa Rica is great for birds uh -huh. and monkeys and, and frogs, but for the bigger animals, uh, the Pantanal is it. And, you know, we go, our main uh, target is the jaguars, but there is so much more. I mean, it's, it's, it's an amazing, amazingly vibrant place. And the animals are relatively easy to see. A lot of the things that you see, uh, documentaries and things that you see about the Amazon were actually filmed in the Pantanal because it's easier to see the animals and a lot of the animals. Uh-huh. Uh, so, so we those go down. are jaguars. Those yeah. are jaguars. Uh, yeah, yeah. And they are nocturnal animals. Um, they can be, they're, they're kind of active whenever they want They're you know, they tend to lay up during the middle of the day when it's hot and, and just nap. So they're not very active, um, from late morning until 
um, later in the afternoon, they get up and start moving around again. But this picture was taken at uh, daylight, right? Yeah. So we go out um, just before sunup in the morning. We stay out for about four hours, take a break, come in for lunch, uh, and then go back out again for uh, three or four hours in the afternoon until it gets too dark. Right. And we see lots of jaguars. Oh, okay. Um, Pantanal is also home to many, many, many other other creatures. Uh, this is a jabiru stork. This is the largest, uh, the tallest flying bird in the Americas. And it's one of the symbols of the Pantanal. Oh. Uh, pretty, uh, pretty cool to see these guys. They have a nest right on the lodge where we stay, right on the grounds. This is a fun photograph because you look at yeah. that and you think, yeah, he's all snarling. <laughs> it was really, it was just yawning. Yeah, uh, just happened to catch it with the mouth open while it was yawning. So it looks really dramatic, but it uh -huh. was really, really not. And when you were there in person, kind of fun. So sometimes to catch the moment like this, you just have to station your equipment and just wait and wait a long yeah. time. We spend a lot of time watching cats sleep. Yeah. So we're waiting for him to wake up and do something. So like in that case, you know, it was, it was probably napping and he lifted his head up and yawned. Yeah. And that's when you, when you get the shot and it, you know, it right. looks dramatic, but it was really just yawning. Uh, but yeah, we find a cat typically we'll just hang out as long as we can see it and, uh, and keep an eye on it and wait for some kind of, some, some kind of activity, you know, right. usually they'll get up and start hunting uh, or walking and, and looking for things. Uh, so this is another endangered animal, the, the giant otter. Um, it's globally endangered, but in the Pantanal, uh -huh. they have a good population. So we see, uh, we typically see them uh, on every trip. I've seen giant otters, and these guys are—they're over six feet long. The, wow. uh, the adults. Uh, you can see this is a mother and a cub, and he's—he doesn't look too happy, and I don't think she is either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mom. Uh, but these these eat fish, so you'll see them duck down into the water, and most of the time they come up with a, the fish and they start chewing on it, and they'll be close enough you can actually hear them crunching on the fish. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, wow. yeah, it's fun. They'll pop up on each side of the boat, so we go out in boats looking for the jaguars, uh -huh. and uh, and we see these guys not every time, not every trip. I mean, not every time we go out, but um, on every trip we've seen them at least once. And this is another globally endangered animal that is uh, doing very well in the Pantanal. This is a hyacinth macaw, mm -hmm. the world's largest parrot. Uh, and these guys are, they're over three feet long. They're really big. Yeah, they're not afraid of humans. They're really, really pretty and fun to watch. Always enjoy seeing them. So as you can see, there's a lot more to the Pantanal than just jaguars. Hi. Uh, there are many species of raptors hawks. Uh, this is a great black hawk coming down to grab a fish uh, off the water. This is another cat that we uh, often get to see. This is called an ocelot. It's a smaller spotted cat. Right. It's, uh, it's a little bit bigger than a house cat. Mm -hmm. um, about maybe a, a little bit smaller than a bobcat. And these guys are nocturnal. Uh, but the lodge we stay at has a viewing area with lights. And they don't come out every night, but most, I would say, three out of five nights, we get to see an ocelot, take some pictures of them. So that was really a thrill the first time I got to see these little cats. Yeah. So these are all, they're wild. You know, they're free to come and go. Not captive. And there are many different little parrots. These are, uh, I think, yellow chevron parakeets on the grounds of the lodge. <laughs> This is uh, billed as the most beautiful heron in the Americas, the Agami heron. Uh, it's found throughout tropical America, but it's not easy to find. They're always up underneath undergrowth and in real heavy brush. Mm -hmm. So whenever we're able to get a clear photo of them, it's really uh, uh, something special. Yeah. And this is uh, jaguar food. So the main things that the jaguars in the Pantanal eat are capybaras, which is what this is world's largest rodent and caiman which are a type of uh like a, an alligator or a crocodilian so these are the pair of baby capybaras the babies are pretty cute 
yeah the adults um yeah not so much but <laughs> they're, yeah, important. They're, cute. they're important for the ecosystem and this is a caiman this is the other main thing that the jaguars eat and these only get so a full-grown big yakare caiman is only about six feet long uh -huh. so they're they're a lot smaller than our alligators in the america and the united states um, and the, the jaguars are there's about 10 million caimans in the Pantanal, so there's plenty for the jaguars to eat. Oh, yeah. And that was another cayman hey, sunning on the bank. Hey, a butterfly. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Coming down to check out the cayman. That's Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> That's nice thing. And this is another one of the many birds, a heron. It's called the uh, capped heron because of that. It's got like a black uh, cap up here and then this long... Mm -hmm streamers coming off the back of its head uh, but i love the colors on its face very beautiful bird yeah and of course jaguars lots of jaguars we see pretty much every time we go out you know we go out twice a day mm -hmm. and uh it's rare for us to not see usually more than one jaguar every time we go out so they're always around. This one has just killed a capybara. I don't know if you can see it right there, that brown. Yeah, I uh, see it. Yeah. And he was uh, trying to trying to bring it up that bank, steep banks. He was stopping to catch his breath because he was having a hard time. A big capybara can weigh 100 pounds. Wow. So it's, it's a lot for them to try to carry and lift so up that. He must have a strong bank. jaw. Yeah. Yeah. He carried yeah. That. Jaguars have the strongest jaw of any of the cats. Their, oh yeah their muscles right here are super strong they have a really powerful bite mm -hmm. one of the things they eat in the amazon are these really large turtles and they can bite through the shell really wow yeah. so the pantanal has five species of kingfishers and they're pretty easy to photograph except for a couple of them are shy but a lot easier than the belted kingfishers in the united states this guy was hovering right over our boat Mm -hmm. Gave us plenty of chances for many shots. Oh, nice shot. Uh, green kingfisher. So the five different species are all different sizes. So they kind of, they don't really compete with each other. They all eat different sized fish. Mm -hmm. and Amazon kingfisher. And these are the little guys, the green and rufous. And then the smallest one, the American pygmy kingfisher is only a few inches tall and it, that one's not easy to find because again it likes to be up underneath heavy brush and hard mm -hmm. to hard to spot up underneath the, the branches so they just wait until they see a fish and then drop down and grab it mm. there are two different monkeys actually three three different species of monkeys in the pantanal uh, this one was a little bit grumpy he's a, a black howler monkey mm -hmm. you can tell by his face he wasn't real happy with us and then he let us know what he thought of the photographers. <laughs> and again, we're always looking for Jaguars. Uh, so we're photographing from boats. And I'm using a 600 millimeter lens. Uh -huh. So, you know, it looks like he's about to jump on us or whatever, but it's really not as close as it looked. Yeah. Right. And, and it was just walking down to the water. It wasn't like stalking us or anything. Yeah. But it looks like he's just staring yeah. at you. It looks like a really dramatic shot. Yeah, nice. Uh, one of the other parrot species there, there's many different varieties uh, that you might see, orange-winged Amazon. And there's two different species in the toucan family. This is one of them, uh, chestnut ear Arakari, hanging out at our lodge. And this is the other one, the toko toucan, which is, again, the world's largest toucan. The, the Pantanal is full of all these animals that are the biggest. Even the jaguar is the third largest cat in the world. So it's got the largest uh, a rodent with a capybara, the largest toucan, the largest parrot, uh, the, the largest bird with the, um, the uh, uh, what was it called? I forgot the name, the stork that I showed earlier. <laughs> Oh, okay. Jabiru, the Jabiru stork. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's it. That's another hyacinth macaw there waving by. Wow. Uh, those are 
the young young macaw just uh -huh. out of the nest. So you can see there's plenty of jaguars, but there's lots and lots of other things to see. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's really fun. Yeah, it must be a really exciting place to go and it is. Take I mean, pictures. every time you go out, you don't yeah. know what you're going to see. It's like, wow, right. it's nonstop. So uh, when is uh, the next trip to this country? So I'm actually going this year, but that one sold out. I have another one up for next year, 2022. Okay. Uh, at the end of August in 2022. I see. So, yeah. Most of them um, sell out pretty quickly, especially I think everybody's, you know, we've been all been locked up for a year. Oh, yeah. Now right. we're starting to get out. I think everybody's ready to I know. No, sign up for something and go, out. Yeah. go on a trip. Yeah, yeah. So you go there about once a year? Mm -hmm. Yeah, typically. Okay. Do you have some other uh, workshops that you're planning on in your future? Yeah, we go uh, this fall. I'm doing the Elkra in Rocky Mountain National Park. Oh, okay. Uh, and you get to see the elk fighting. Uh, also doing uh, the Aspen's fall color in Colorado. Uh, landscapes in Utah. Uh -huh. So lots of stuff coming up. To find Jeff Parker's photography workshops, go to the directory for photography.com. Directory number four, photography.com. Here is the directory for photography.com website. International Directory of Photography Workshops and Showcase. Okay, so if you go down a little bit, you see all kinds of stuff. Quick destination search, popular subjects, and some banners. Recently posted photography events and so on. So the quickest way to find the Jeff's photography workshop should be go to the left column and this search photo events button here. Click on it. Then let's search by keyword, which will be his name. So Jeff, Jeff Parker, search. And you see all the workshops listed on this directory by Jeff Parker. Or Explore in Focus, which is uh, his business name. So we have uh, Jaguars of uh, Pantanal, Pumars and Pigs of uh, Patagonia, Winter Pumars and Pigs of uh, Patagonia, and another Patagonia workshop. So let's see Jaguars. More info. Wow, what a picture. This is the photograph that we just saw in the interview with Jeff uh, moments ago. Jaguars of uh, Pantanal for 2021. Okay. By the way, if you would like to see Jeff's profile, you can click here. Then here's Jeff's profile page where you can read about his services, workshops about Jeff. And his website. Okay, so back to the Jaguars of uh, Pantanal workshop page, the Brazilian Pantanal, spend nine days and nights, nights are important on this trip, I guess. 
There are going to be lots of night photography sessions, I believe. So to get more info, click here. Then you'll be directed to Jeff's own website where you'll find the Jaguars workshop. Oops, it's only limited to eight people and sold out. However, I think Jeff told us that you can still put your name on the wait list. Then in case someone drops, you'll be the one. You'll be the lucky one who can join this fabulous trip with Jeff Parker. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching and see you soon.